morning everyone, it's Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42. It is Monday the 17th of August 2020. I got my new glasses, what do you think? They look good, don't you think? Yeah, these are my old glasses, or these are my new glasses. These are my old glasses. Can you tell the difference? What, you actually want to see them on my face? Old glasses. New glasses. Apparently I have a style. And while the frames are different and the lenses on these are slightly bigger than these, they're pretty much the same glasses. Oops, that was loud. How you doing today? It is early morning. I'm upstairs in the crafting bureau and I have stuff to share. So I am going to start this out by going back to my giveaway from video. I think this is video 104. Video 102, I was doing a giveaway for Long and Winding Road. And I had drawn a name and I had not heard back from that person. I gave her until the 17th today to contact me. I checked everything this morning. My emails, my Instagram, my YouTube messages. I have not heard from her, so I drew it again. And this time the winner is Vicky Profont. So Vicky, two weeks to contact me and I will get this sent to you. I'll send them anywhere. I've said that before. Alrighty. I have finishes. I actually used my burrow the other day and I was up here working on getting some stuff done. So I have four finishes to share with you. I have three projects to share with you. I have a gift that was sent to me that's meant to be shared with you. And I have some shout outs because I haven't done shout outs. Well, since the last time I did a shout out. And seriously, I don't keep track of this stuff. I write down notes, but that's so that I remember what to talk about. And sometimes the notes don't even help because, you know, well, human, what can I say? I'm on my creaky stool, so if you hear me, it's because I'm wiggling on my stool. Sorry, I did that little boob shuffle there for you. Can't even. Alrighty, so shout outs. We're going to start with shout outs. I have watched three people who are new to me, and so I'm going to shout them out in no particular order. The first one is Liz from Bent Needle Makes. She posted, um, she posted a photo of her most recent video on Instagram, which I do all the time too, and she tagged me in it. So of course I had to go check out and see what she was all about. She was talking about my hobbit door, the door into the crafting burrow. I have gotten so many comments on the hobbit door, and I, I agree with all of you. I think it's absolutely amazing. When I got the idea of turning my son's bedroom into the hobbit library, I knew I wanted a round hobbit door. When I told Mark, that I wanted around Hobbit door. He goes, I don't know how to do that. And my reply was, yeah, but if anybody can do it, you can. And he did. He makes the most amazing things for me. And honestly, the Hobbit door has to, has to top that list because it is pretty cool. And I am so, so tickled with it. But anyway, go check out Liz. Bent Needle makes. I'll link her below and the other two below. Um, the other one, the second one that I'm shouting out is um, Sherry, Colorado Cross Stitcher. She hit floss tube running. She has two videos and over 3,000 subscribers, and oh my gosh, um, she doesn't need me to shout her out, but I'm going to anyway. 
Very nice lady, very nice projects, very well put together. I had heard about her from Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher, and yeah, go check her out. Very nice. The third one was one that I heard about yesterday morning when I was watching Julie and Alyssa at Stitching at the Cabin, and that is Stitching Big Things with Hallie. Obviously, her name is Hallie. And she's got seven or eight videos out. I decided since there's so few and they're not very long that I would start at the beginning and watch them all and get to know her. So please go check out these three ladies because we all know if we've done floss tube ourselves, if we watch floss tube, new people need to be shouted out to get their names out because we all got to share our love for cross stitch. Alrighty. So, my first finish, and I posted a picture of this on Instagram. Is my Mill Hill Painted Pumpkin. I love these little kits. And this one was an absolute blast to work on. Two colors, 310 black, 721 orange, lots of beads, absolutely fantastic. I use sticky back felt on the back, put a ribbon on it, and I have a little ornament. And I have a pattern to pass along. It has enough floss in it to stitch it again. It has enough beads to stitch it again. I have colored on the pattern for this, but if you're interested in it, um, leave a comment below and let me know that you would like the Mill Hill kit. All right. My second FFO, I went to, I think I got these at Michael's. I'm pretty sure I got these at Michael's. I have not gone out and done much of anything since the Rona began way back in March. I haven't cut my hair. It is getting so long. It's so long now that I can pull it up and put it on top of my hair head. I could put my hair on top of my head with a clip and not have any stragglies, which I haven't been able to do that for years. I do trim my own bangs. They're going to be needing it again soon, but I can do that. I don't know when I'll get back to a hairdresser, but it is what it is. Anyway, I went to Michael's a month or so ago. I don't remember when. Days blur. Yeah, they do. They blur. I'm not sure what day of the week it is most of the time. I know it's Monday today because I looked on the calendar so I could tell you. I went to Michael's and I bought two frames. They were buy one, get one free or buy one, get one 50% off or some such thing. It was a deal. So I bought two frames exactly the same because I knew I had two patterns that I was pretty sure the frames would fit. And the first one is Blackbird by Blackbird Designs. This does not have the gloss in it. No glare. Oh my gosh, what a concept. So that is what I did with that one. And quite honestly, I'm not overly thrilled with my finishing on this one because you can see it's loose. It's mine. I don't care. The back of the, the frame just, it has these little toggles on here to take that off and everything. When I was trying to put it back together, I had so much trouble. I couldn't get it to fit top to bottom in this until I was working on the second finished piece that I had. And I realized you have to take this backer board and put it up into the groove and then put the bottom in and then you can close the toggles and it will fit. That's your lesson for today. Blackbird Designs, Blackbird. I did this in $37.99. Is that it? 
I think so. Possibly. Maybe. If you really want to know, ask me. Because I didn't write that down in my notes. My other one, and I did a much better job on, on framing this one. Uh, this is from Melanie Smith's Prem Stitcher Repre Retreat. This is Stone Street Stitchworks, Quaker Wreath. When I look off into the distance, it means I'm thinking. And there is that one finished. And this one is much tighter in the frame. I stretched the fabric much better. Um, I think on the first one I tried, what do they call it when you do it on the back? Lace it. And I didn't do that great of a job. This one I used double-sided acid-free mounting tape. And I can pull it much better. So that's my third finish. My fourth finish. My fourth finish is for an exchange. And I've had this stitch for a bit now, but I couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do with it. And I've been thinking about this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then finally I came up with an idea and I came up here and I did this one. This is Hocus Pocus. This is a Sue Hillis design. It is from our 2016 Dark Shadows pamphlet. And I just did a flat mount. I posted this on, well, I posted it in a couple of groups on, I posted it in the Stitcher's Coven. And I posted it on Instagram. I think I posted it on Instagram. I don't know, maybe I did. Someone asked me how I got this curve up here. So what I did is I did my measurements and I figured out how wide I needed the piece, how long I needed the piece to cover this, and then I did my marks on my foam core and I came up to how high I wanted the side to be. And then I used the outer edge of a compass to trace this line and then to cut this line, I use the outer edge of the compass as a guide. And when I'm cutting foam core, I don't try to cut it all the way through with one slice. Um, I draw the knife over it four or five, six times, go down just a little bit each time. I find that for me, I get a much better edge when I do that. And that's how I got the edge on this piece. Then. For the back pieces, and there's another piece of foam core, and there's another piece of backer board. I added a half inch to both sides and to the bottom, and then I did the same thing. I came up to where I wanted the side on this to be, and I used that same compass curve, compass curve, to do this one, and I did it exactly the same way. So I am very, very happy with how that turned out. And other than having to get the rest of the goodies that go with my exchange piece, I'm ready for my exchange. Alrighty. Would you like to see some of the stitching that I've done? Because I have done some. Alright. No, I haven't taken anything out of Q-Snaps. Too much work. You know, it's enough getting myself ready to do a video without taking things out of Q-Snap and ironing and those people that do that, they're just absolutely amazing. I am working on Blackwater Blooms. This is Needle Made Designs. See, this time I have to tilt it back because I'm in the crafting burrow and I've got my big light up there, but in order for you guys to see it, I need to tilt it back so you might see shadows. Oh, 
Oh, puppy snot. There you go. Pulled my thread through to the back. This is where I'm at with black water blooms. I have finished this flower here. I am now working on that flower over there. I realized when I was working on that flower over there that I still have a little bit to finish on this one. And then there's another flower over here. And then I'm to the leaves and the vase. I love it on this fabric. Tuscan Sun. 32 count Tuscan Sun. Yeah. But there you are. That is Blackwater Blooms. And I started a new piece. Whips. Works in prog progress. Words. Words are so hard, Stephanie. Words. <sighs> Works in progress. I used to be monogamous, and I was quite happy being monogamous. I'd have one project at home to work on, and then I got to the point where I had my one project at home, and then I had a smaller project to take with me to go to doctor's appointments or dentist appointments, to take to work, to whatever. And now I think I'm up to seven or eight projects This might be number nine. And I feel slightly overwhelmed having that many. And, and then there's some of you out there who go, oh, I have 80 works in progress, or 90 works in progress, or some of you who have over 100, and you make my brain twitch. Eight or nine drives me nuts. It's too much. It's overwhelming. I can't do it all. But I started this one because of Donna Ray. Donna Ray, Flannel Jammy Farms. She is one of the nicest ladies I have seen on FlossTube. And there are a lot of nice, nice people on FlossTube. She is a gentle soul. And she is sweet. And she is wonderful. And... I thoroughly love her with so many others too. But Saturday the 15th was National Honeybee Day. And if you know Donna Ray, you know that she and her husband have honeybees. And she cares for the earth and she cares for the bees. And she stitches beautiful things. And she and Glenn, Southern Stitcher, Linda, Blue Horse, Yellow Cow, they decided that they were going to do a stitch along for National Honey Bee Day, anything that had a bee in it. I knew I had a pattern up here that had a little honey bee, and I was thinking it was a little pattern. And I still do. It's somewhere over here. I, I haven't found it yet. But as I was going through all my patterns and everything, and I don't have a tremendous amount of stash. But I was going through them, and I found a pattern that I had bought at a first Thursday meetup at Acorns and Threads probably a year ago. I kitted it up. I had, when I pulled that pattern out, it had all the called four DNC flosses in there. I'm pretty sure that I remember buying the fabric for it. it, the pattern calls for a 35 count. I think I bought a 36 count, but it wasn't with the pattern, which means I've probably used it because when I went through all my fabrics, every piece of 36 count I had had been cut up to make something else. So I ended up using a 32 count and that's okay. So the pattern that I'm talking about is Plum Street Samplers Harvest Keeper. I have seen so many people stitch on this and I think it's absolutely beautiful and of course there's a witch and there's honeybees and bee skeps. Hmm. 
these are the flosses that I am using. They're all DMC colors. I went through my papers that I have for journaling and I found these ones that I have that have bees and honeycombs on them. So I made cards for the colors. I found this ring that has the little honeybee on it. Turn over. Turn over. That has the little honeybee on it. I know I got this at the Kitsap Stitchers meetup that I went to earlier this year, but I can't remember who I got it from. I'm thinking Aaron Two Martini or Daylene. So grateful, but I don't remember because I'm bad. But anyway, those are all the colors that I'm using. I am stitching it on a 32 count Belfast linen, vintage country mocha. I have to stop leaving the threads hanging through the front side. Just looks so tacky. But there I am. I have the center bee skep done. I did some work on the tree yesterday and I'm coming over here and I'm starting on the flower. So this is for the hashtag bees please Sal on Instagram. And there's already a lot of fantastic pictures. I'm housing it in one of my Vana Pfeiffer style project bags. I chose this one. The pattern was called the Stitcher Hood because all these people stitching together, we create a Stitcher Hood. So I thought that this pattern was appropriate. This bag was appropriate to keep it in. Alrighty. Stuff. I'm telling you. Stuff. I have one piece that I haven't finished yet. Um, I need to get fabric for the back of it. I've shown you him before. He's the only one that I haven't gotten finished. But this is my Plague Doctor. This is on an 18 count Picture This Plus Cyprium, which I love the color. And Picture This Plus makes the softest Ada. It, is, it just feels so nice. But I want to make him into a pillow. And I have the pillow form. But I don't have fabric for the back of them. And like I said, I have not been going out. I've, I went to Joann's here recently, but I didn't take time to do any shopping for fabric while I was there. I think I finally decided that what I want for the back of him is like a black brocade type fabric. I want to make the pillow form so that it opens up in the back so it'll be a sleeve style. Eventually I will get to Joann's, I will get fabric, I will sew a pillowcase and I will share it with you. It's getting warm up here. I left the air conditioner on in here last night so that this room would be cool because I have my south window right there. And so this room gets warm fast and I've been up here talking for 25 minutes and this room is getting warm fast. So I need to wrap things up. All right. The thing that has taken over my stitching soul and the one that I am just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying is my Stony Creek Halloween Village. I love working on this so much. When I first looked at the pattern, it's 30 pages, okay? Each, pat, each page is 89 stitches by 90 stitches, which doesn't seem like a lot, right? And if you look at the pattern on the back, 
you can see that there are a lot of pages that are not full coverage. I actually looked at this the other day and I think that there are five that are not, five or six, one, two, three, four, five. There are six pages out of 30 that are almost full coverage. So there's a lot of them that are not. I mean, look at the pattern. And you can see there's a lot of empty space in those stitches. So I thought 89 by 90, that's not going to be too much to stitch. And I can get it done at a, a fairly good clip. But I will tell you that so far, each element, I am amazed at how many stitches go into each element on this piece. I am working on this pumpkin, and this is the corner of page one, and I am working on this pumpkin, and there are so many color changes. So many color changes, so many different shades of orange, and then the white is glow in the dark. And this pumpkin seems to go on forever and ever and ever. I'm about halfway done. I've got the top row of white done. I've got most of this row of white done, but I still have all the um, bottom row and part of the second row to finish of it. And it feels like it's all I'm stitching on. I do break out and do other things. You know, but there's a lot of stitching on each one of these, and it uses a ton of floss. When I stitched the first pumpkin here, I told you this. There's seven or eight different colors of orange and yellow in that pumpkin, and that pumpkin used up one whole skein of 740 orange because I'm stitching four over two. This thing eats the floss. I asked Mark if we have a little variety store here in town and they have a DMC spinner rack. I asked him if he would pick me up a couple of skeins of 740 and 741. And he came home with two skeins of one of them and one skein of the other and that's all they had. So when I went to Joanne's the other day, that was what I was looking for. And I got... I think two skeins of each of them, and that was all they had. This Rona needs to stop because it's seriously affecting. It's DMC. It's supposed to be available everywhere. But this, this has been the piece that I love to work on. This is where it's at right now. I am absolutely loving this. And there went the needle on the floor. Good thing my floor is clean. I'll be able to find it. All right. I was contacted by Karina, who is Bags Plus. And I have a couple of her floss buddies. You've seen them before. She was the one that took my Yoda piece and made it into a floss buddy flip. I absolutely love all of them and she's always posting fantastic fabrics and yeah gorgeous stuff she sent me a package the other day and in the package was this floss buddy flip a smaller floss buddy flip and these are the ones that have the pocket on the front and the place to put your floss in the back and then she sent me a regular floss buddy look at this fabric this fabric is absolutely gorgeous and when she sent me this package she told me that these two are for me and this one is for me to give away. I'm not doing that in this video. My three year floss tube anniversary is next month 
and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what it is that I'm going to be doing for that, for my giveaway for that. Because if you guys have put up with me for three years, you deserve something. So anyway, thank you so much, Karina. I love your work. I love, I love the whole concept of these. And thank you for thinking of me. I will be using these and enjoying these as I always do. I will be giving this one up as part of my three-year floss tube anniversary giveaway next month when I figure out what else I'm going to be doing. That requires thinking. Alrighty. Do, 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 do. I have made two purchases. Both of them were instant downloads. I've been watching Autumn Lane Stitchery on Floss Tube, and those two are a riot. Absolutely a riot. They that's a couple that I would like to sit down and just chat with. But he showed this one that he designed and I knew I had to have it. This is Halloween night and I am so looking forward to stitching that one. And the other one I ordered, I'm trying to stitch some things to put up here in the crafting burrow. And one of the things that I wanted to do, I've stitched a couple of dream catchers for my granddaughters. I really wanted to find a crescent moon dream catcher, and I haven't really been able to find a pattern that I like. Um, a few years ago, I found a photo and I used Pictopat and made it into a pattern. And I stitched it, and while I really liked it, I didn't like it. So I sent it off to a friend who is absolutely thrilled to have it, and I know that it has a good home. But I thought, if I can't find a dream catcher that I like, that's a crescent moon, maybe I could find one that's a tree of life. I didn't find a Tree of Life dream catcher, but I did find this pattern. So, it is a Celtic green Tree of Life. It was designed by Mariana Harding. Um, I will try to post the link on that. It's only four colors, but I thought this would look wonderful up here, right above the bed. So both of these are future works in progress, or flips, as Holly of Holly and the